Welcome back to the show, everybody. Enoch Mwamba coming. Uh, Enoch Mwamba coming up. Can you guys put the comment up from Jeff in Calgary regarding Lanny McDonald, Wayne Gretzky, Fajardo, and Boldy? I want to address that. But first, a sports update. Former World Wrestling Entertainment pro Shad Gaspard was still missing Tuesday after he was swept out to sea in Southern California last weekend while swimming with his young son. Gaspard's 10-year-old son, Aria was rescued and several other swimmers made it out of the water safely after they were caught in a rip current Sunday afternoon at Venice Beach in Los Angeles. Gaspard, who's 39, was about 50 yards from shore when he was spotted, when he was last spotted by police. Former NFL star Chad Johnson left a $1,000 tip for his waiter after dining at a restaurant in Florida that recently reopened amid the outbreak. Did you hear this? Because you love Ocho Cinco, oh, yeah. right? Uh, the restaurant shared a photo of Ocho Cinco's receipt on Facebook to thank the former NFL wide receiver for his continued patronage and generosity to their employees during these most difficult times. And Raptors Uprising Gaming Club improved its unbeaten esports record to 5-0 and Tuesday with a best-of-three victory over Knicks Gaming in the NBA 2K League. Toronto opened with an 83-65 win before recording the sweep with a 78-72 decision. Kenneth, Kenny got work. Haley led Toronto with 37 points in game one. Still don't know what the hell this is, but yeah. I like the name. Kenny got work. Kenny got work. Uh, this sports update for the Tap Brew House and Liquor Store. Their kitchen's open and awaiting your order. Call 761-2777 for their hours or visit their Facebook page for their menu. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. A little later on, we'll get to the uh, Wendell Clark sports update too. Wendell Clark's job fair tomorrow. Observing all social distancing measures, of course. But that's going on tomorrow. Uh, Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, uh, to, argo, uh, to argue Cody Fajardo was better than Bo Levi Mitchell is to argue Lanny McDonald was better than Wayne Gretzky. Uh, Bo Levi is not Wayne Gretzky. I think that's something you wanted to point out. And <laughs> yeah. by the way, what's wrong with Lanny McDonald? Uh, that's another one. We're talking about two Hall of Famers here right now. Three, Cody's my guy. Uh, West Division, most outstanding player, led the league in passing last season. Four, most importantly, is my wife told me about Darian Durant. She said, Rod, you don't see his faults. You're too clouded by your blind love for him. And I said to her, this was all through the decade of decadence. I said, yeah, and so what? I don't care. As you've gotten to know me over the last year, if you're in with me, you're in. To the end of time. If you're out with me, you're up to the end of time. Cody's my guy. I make no apologies for that. I can back it up statistically, but I don't need to. Yeah. And by the way, when I came out with that 10 uh, top 10 quarterback list in the CFL the other day, I know everybody was upset about it, but it came down to this is my criteria for any list of that nature. If you're starting a franchise, who's the first guy you're picking? That's it. Even if it's just for one season. Even if it's just for one season. He's whatever. coming off the most outstanding, you know, player right. in the West. And potentially, you know, and it was not, it was a tight race, you know, and for the league award. So, yeah, number one passer last year. Of course, he'd be near the top of the list, if not at the top of the list. I think he'd be in, in the top, you know, three or four on everybody's list. So, yeah. Paul Totsky from Toronto. He's an Argos fan, writes in, and he says, on potential, I can agree with you, Rod. He still has a lot to prove, but it's a great start. The Riders clearly agree because they've made him the highest paid quarterback in franchise history, and he still hasn't won a playoff game yet. And of Natea Jay's list there of all those attributes, you pointed it out. Leadership wasn't won. Well, which, by the way, you don't pick in DraftKings. No. <laughs> There's no category for leadership. So that, that's where I'd put Cody. Well, that, that's exactly what I just kind of continued on. I'm sure there was more, and maybe that was one of them. I don't know in Trevor Harris's list, but he had arm strength um, that he gave to McLeod Bethel Thompson. I remember that footwork, Vernon Adams, swagger, uh, went to Bo Levi, of course. What did Matt Nichols get? Vision or mind or intelligence? Intelligence, IQ. IQ, okay. And then leadership is what I would give Cody. I'd give Cody the lead for sure. That's where I'd have fit him. I, can everybody please just stand down? For instance, Jeff just wrote in the Stamps fan, your stats can back it up? Again, unplug your ears, Jeff. I just said he led the league in passing last year. What did Bo do? Oh, yeah, he was on the injured list half the year. 
injured list. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go around and around and around because everybody has their own thoughts. That This is an unwinnable argument. Okay. It was Cody's first year starting, by the way. Right? So <laughs> what's with uh, Raj Rand? I'm not ranting on anything, but I'm not going to argue with the Stamps fan all day. I got better things to do. But... With Matt Nichols with the IQ thing, I'm sure he's got a very high IQ. But when he comes out after a game, after being booed at home at IG Field and says his feelings were hurt, that he was booed by his own team, I'm sorry, I don't want that guy. That's all? Yeah. So, yeah, there's Cody Fajardo. There's a lot left to prove. You know what? I'm going to love watching it unfold. And, you know, the definition of faith, I don't know if Enoch's watching or not, but he would agree. Having a belief in something with no proof that it's there. That is the definition of faith. Having belief in something without proof that it's there. I have faith in Cody that he's going to get it done. And by the way, I had faith in Darian that he was going to get it done. And when they finally do get it done, it is the most unbelievable feeling to be able to stand beside a guy and say, I believed in you all the way. Yeah. It's a great feeling because a lot of people jump ship. So, Cody's my guy. I don't, I don't need stats. I have them. Why am I sitting here defending my love for Cody Fajardo? Why am I doing that? I guess it's a hot-button topic for me. And I sit there watching the last dance, which we haven't even got to. We will, though, on this show today. A lot of Michael Jordan reminds me of Darian. The way he carries himself. He's maybe a little more gregarious than Darian. Darian's a very serious, was always a very serious guy. He'll crack a smile and stuff. Jordan looked like he was really always joking. Yeah. Off the field, off the court. Darian was serious most of the time. There's a lot of pressure on the guy. Yeah. Being the quarterback of this football team. And he delivered. So uh, I have an email here. From my friend Lance, and I really appreciate it. It's regarding the border closure to June 21st in BC. It's been closed for another month past that. This is from a government official that has sent this to me, highlighted in a statement from the Prime Minister. Americans and Canadians also cross the land border every day to do essential work or for other urgent or essential reasons, and that travel will not be impacted. My friend says the players would need to be designated as essential workers by both governments, U.S. and Canada. He said this shouldn't be too difficult as it has already been discussed for the NHL. So to the uh, TSN insiders this morning that I was watching on Jay and Dan, they were saying that the NHL officials that they're talking to, this is Dregs, don't feel the border closure will be an issue for the National Hockey League. So I'm simply saying, why would it be an issue for the CFL? That's what my friend's saying, that government official on the flip side though i read the article from the canadian press that says it will be a major issue so there's people getting paid millions of dollars to sort this out it's not you and me it's not me and you so we sit here and have coffee today and have fun debating it yep pretty much and you know i just fully believe that they'll be allowed across the border i just do they'll have to have a plan they won't just be allowed over um without a plan but yeah, that'll be sorted out, and it won't just happen at the border. It'll happen at a much higher level, and they'll have some special clearance pass, and those chartered flights will just fly in and fly out, and they'll be fine. And you we know breathe. Where this, you know where this is going, right? Like, these Stamps fans are just going, cuckoo. Yeah, we need just to. Not, they're not backing down on the bow thing. Can you guys just please? I'm not interested in arguing. You're, you got Bo, and you're happy with him? We got Cody, and we're happy with him. Can we just stop? You're not going to convince me into loving Bo Levi Mitchell more than Cody Fajardo. Is that what your goal is? I don't care. I respect the fact that you love him. Can you respect the fact that Cody's my guy? Please. I'm not going to sit here and argue with him all day. No. Uh, Neil Shuchuk, by the way, writes uh, in from White Court, Alberta, injecting some sense into this. He says, was the Canadian press writer a sports fan or a sports denier? <laughs> Uh, the writer was Stephen Wino, by the way, who was the Canadian NHL writer for the Canadian press. And you know what? I, I could go dig it up here uh, if we wanted to. If you want to tap dance for a while, I could find it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I do want to update the poll here for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Are you in favor of the NHL's 24-team playoff format? 74% of you saying, yes, let's play. 
26% saying no, not fair. So there's that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the NHL is going to play. 24 teams is fine. I like it. It's going to be exciting. But we're getting dangerously close in the NHL to let's move on. Like we're getting dangerously close to, I mean, oh, yeah. yesterday and today out, out in Saskatchewan with temperatures pushing towards 30 degrees and I can get out on the paddle board and we get out golfing and, you know, all those types of things, sit on the deck and have coffee and hockey's over. We're getting close. We're getting close now. Not yet, but we're almost to the point where I forgot I'm, I'm done. I moved on from the season. I'm into the summer. Get me excited for next year and let's start that and let's get rolling. But I think once they, if they can get it going though right away, I think we can fire it up and get that emotion and get that, that uh, passion for the game uh, and the hunger going again. But if this goes into July and August before they start, it's going to be real tough. Yeah, what, they don't care. No. They're going to be playing. It's going to be on TV. You can watch if you want. Go kayaking if you want. Don't matter. They're going to play. Yeah. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.